All right, we're in the shorts again because it's way too hot and obviously the quality of this production is always constantly going to be on the decline. Uh, on the upside, I have some honey lemon and that's really nice. <laughs> Alrighty, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Real Swing Season 2. Exciting times. How's everybody doing? We are back. We are talking about jazz drumming and other kinds of drumming. Maybe not the other kinds of drumming. We'll get to the other kinds of drumming at some point. But for now, it's still going to be jazz drumming. Um, today, I wanted to talk about a topic um, that has plagued me almost my entire uh, playing career. And it's a problem that I don't actually have a solution for. Um, yeah, so I'm actually curious if you can comment a solution for me, uh, that would be awesome. Um, but yeah, um, so when you're playing jazz, there's one of the things that you're kind of, you know, not necessarily required to do, but one of the things that you like to be able to do is to actually, um, <clears throat> play a song with brushes, like you can start off the, uh, the top of the song with brushes, you know, something really nice and sweet. And then halfway through, once you're done grooving, you, know, you want to go to the B section, or when the solos kick in, you want to switch to the... You want to switch to the sticks. And then switch back to the brush. Right, that's something that's very common in uh, jazz drums playing. Um, and uh, those transitions can be done pretty smoothly. Like, you know, you wanna, whenever you want to switch from uh, the brushes to the sticks or the sticks to the brush, some people figure like they, they have to rush, they have to panic a lot. But um, one of the things that makes that transition easier is if you leave the gap, right? It's okay to have a little bit of space in between. Like if you're playing here one, Jazz. It's okay to leave the gap, right? It's not such a big deal. In fact, all you need to do later on, just, you know, fill in the space a little bit uh, to make it seem a little bit more seamless and uh, the transition will sound fine. So usually what we do is we use the left foot um, to fill up a little bit of space. Um, usually if you're going from brushes to sticks, what you can do is you can do a little bit of a splash here to imitate the sound of the right symbol that you're going to. Right, and then uh, yeah, it's, it's gonna be you know, something really uh, nice and smooth. So go from here. So about maybe a two bars before you switch. And that's really nice. And then if you're going back to the brushes, you just need to keep the two and four going on the hi hat and be fine. a little bit of a fill to, you know, complete the transition. And then you're good. Sounds pretty, you know, pretty nice though. So that transition is easy, right? Transitioning from uh, brushes to sticks and sticks to brushes. Pretty easy. No problem. Straightforward. The problem that I have, and most drummers actually have, um, and I still haven't like found the perfect solution to this, is um, where to put the stuff, you know? Because every time I do it, I'm always in a mad dash to switch uh, and I'm thinking about way too many things that inadvertently put the things in places where I don't really want them to be. Like for instance, if I'm playing my brushes and I got my sticks at the side here, just nice. And then when I transition, I just put my brushes in the floor tom. But what happens is, now I've got brushes on my floor tom. So when I hit my floor tom, it sounds like this.
That's not the sound that you want. So then what happens, and you know what ends up happening is I inadvertently have to like... Oh, I gotta get rid of these brushes now. Uh, I don't know where to put them, I'll put them on the floor. But now I want to change back to... Oh shit, I gotta... Ah, to the floor! Ah, oh, scrambling. And then my sticks on the floor, Tom. I can't do sweeps on the floor, Tom. They're in the way. I put them on the snare drum. Oh, I need a pattern. I'll put them up here then. Oh, the sticks are falling down. So as you can see, it's a problem, right? Now, <clears throat> Ed, Ed, I think Ed Thickpen had like a really cool way of setting it up. He would set his brushes up really nice and pristinely on the snare drum itself, like that. Right? So there wouldn't be in a way you could continue to play. And you go back. Now the problem is, if you want to transition to your stick, you got to make sure you put them back pristinely. And I don't remember that very often. Oftentimes I'm scrambling of where to put my stuff. So when I start the gig, I've got my things here, right? I put them on the floor tom so that I can still play my floor tom, right? And then uh, if I want to have my uh, brushes in hand first, sometimes I'll put my sticks under my bum and I sit on them. But then I transition, I put them on the music stand at the side. Bring up the stick. Maybe put it. It's a mad dash. And sometimes it's hard to keep track of where everything is and if then you get lost and they're just gonna reach my bag for more sticks and stuff like that. So it's really a challenging problem, right? Being able to switch uh, sticks and brushes sometimes can be quite a hassle. If you don't have it set up, you don't have the habit of like setting it in a place constantly or just putting it all over the place. And then when you want to reach for it, you can't. So I think I've got the ultimate solution to this problem. And the solution to this problem comes in the form of something that solves the entire world's problems. Yes. Um, it's all located off camera, obviously. And uh, yeah, it uh, comes in many colors and it comes in many sizes and it's called duct tape. Uh, <laughs> I mean, you know, they've invented those, uh, those, those like stick mallets, right? You got the little mallet ball in the back in there and you got the stick on the top. So why don't we invent, and I, I don't even know if someone's invented this before. Uh, maybe Vic Firth has a model, but why don't we invent the uh, the uh, the stick brush? So yeah, I, I am literally duct taping my brushes to my sticks. I'm gonna do it properly as well, like no, no kind of this winny, wishy washy, winky wonky kind of duct tape job. No, we're doing it properly. We're like, we're 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 treating this as a real permanent solution to our drum set woes. And uh, from now on, all my gigs, I'm gonna play with these, right? Like this is not this is not a gimmick. This is a real thing, right? We're we're actually doing this. So I'm I'm gonna tape this, and they're not gonna come off. Uh, you'll see me at my gigs from now on. With these green stickers, um, sticking my brushes to my sticks. That's how committed I am to this idea because it's a great idea. Uh, I'm patenting this idea. Nobody steal it from me. And there we go. We've got stick brushes. So yeah, so you can uh, you know start off with the, the the brush part. And seamlessly transition. Look at that! One 
one beat of silence and immediately transition back over. Yep, this, these are the pinnacle of drum technology right here. Stick brushes, they're patented. Uh, I will custom make them for you. You do not have permission to make these at home. Uh, if you want a pair of stick brushes, don't duct tape your sticks to your brushes. Send them to me uh, and I'll give you a really cheap discount. Uh, and from now on, you will never have problems switching brushes to sticks and sticks to brushes ever again. It was brilliant. Now, unfortunately, because of the weight distribution, it does make double strokes almost impossible. Any traditional grip this? Oh, it's really weighted. It's like weighted perfectly down the middle where your grip is. <laughs> perfectly balanced, as all things should be. <laughs>